So today we're going to be talking about uh, RTK cores networks and how they operate. So we'll start off by explaining what a cores network is. Uh, cores network stands for Continuously Operating Reference Station. And basically what this is, is it's a GPS unit that's permanently mounted on the ground, but it's not really a GPS unit. So it's, it's this monumented item which has got a GPS antenna on here. But we're not just checking GPS, we're tra tracking GPS, which is the American system, uh, GLONASS, which is the Russian system, and in the future we'll be checking Galileo, the European system, and Beidou, the Chinese system. So these reference stations are permanently mounted around the country, and what actually happens is these receive the signal and they're connected out to the internet via cable or modem, and the data gets streamed from here and it gets streamed off to a server sitting somewhere. Our server happens to be sitting in Auckland, but it doesn't matter where on the world they are. And the data all gets collated in here. So then what do we do with that data? So typically in the past, guys have gone out with a, a GPS basin rover. So they have a GPS base, or it's actually called a GNSS, which is all these objects down here. So you'd go out with this base, and it'd have a radio on the side, and you'd have a rover, and you'd be down here with this pole. And the radio would be broadcasting from here to the user. And he has to get these corrections through almost instantaneously for him to get a centimetre level position with that unit. If he doesn't have that radio connection, he doesn't get centimetre level position. In. Okay? So we need to have that radio connection coming through. So what the cause network does, it effectively takes away or removes the need for the base station. So the guys don't need to have a base station. So what this does for the rover user means when he gets out into the field he has no security issues. He doesn't have to worry about setting up there. Not only that, he, this is typically some distance away from where he's working, you know, maybe a couple of kilometres. So he doesn't have to drive to that site, set it up, drive off to his site, do his work, drive back, pick it up at the end of the day and go. He doesn't have to worry about that at all. So he gets out on site, jumps out of his vehicle and turns it on. But he needs to connect through to our server. Okay, so what we do is we replace the radio that was traditionally on here with a cell motor. So what he does is he's now connecting through to the internet or out to the cloud. Connecting out to the cloud. And then that cloud is then connecting into our server and getting the data. For us to authenticate him, to allow him to get the data, the guy needs to have a username and password. So he sends us his username and password, and we send him the data. Now we have lots of these stations around the country, so there's lots of stations all around the country. One over here, let's say. One down here. So we've got to get rid of that. We have one over here. Okay, and these are all feeding back to here. So then how does the guy, or the user, know what station he's going to connect to? There's different ways we can do that. First of all, when he logs on, he can actually call for the particular one he wants. He wants number one, for example. He can actually call and get data from number one. Or he can call and get data from number two. That's if he knows which one he wants to use. Quite typically, though, the guy doesn't even know what station he wants to use. So on board, he can call for what is the nearest site. So the software will take his GPS position. That will get sent back up into the cloud. Our server will grab its position, it will do a calculation for the nearest site, and it will say, this is the data he wants, so I'll send the data that way back to him. So he can get his real-time correction. Now, this, from this receiving the data from the satellites, us processing it and getting back to him has typically got to be less than a second. Okay, so it's, a, it's got to be a very high-speed connection for him to get that centimetre-level type positioning. But we can do some more cool stuff with this as well. Because these receivers form a box around them, we call that a network. Okay? It doesn't have to be four, it could just be three, but in my drawing here we've got four around the user. So what that allows the user to do is actually get almost an average position from these four stations. Not to quite work like an average position. 
But effectively, you can think about that he's getting some corrections from here, some corrections from here, and some corrections and some corrections from here. That actually improves this person's position, his accuracy of his position. So traditionally, when you went out with your base and your rover, we always used to talk about your error was part not only of your position, but of the baseline length, the distance from your base to your rover. Okay, and we used to talk about that as one ppm or one part per million of the distance. Okay, so which is you know that can be a considerable amount when that base distance begins to grow. More so when you're using internet-based corrections, because typically this could be 30, 50 kilometres away from where you're working. So that part, the portion of the distance, actually grows. Okay, 50 kilometres, one part per million of 50 kilometres is an expected area you're supposed to see that. That's for position. Okay, so let's just put the X, Y. For Z, it's always two to three times that. Always. And that's just got to do with the nature of the geometry. The satellites surround you, but they're always above you. Okay, you can never get them down low. Okay, so two to three times for height. That was from a single site. But if we take the network of all these, we effectively reduce that from one part per million to 0.5 parts per million. Therefore, we're halving that distance error for a user. So that means he gets a more reliable position when he gets out into the field.